We start with flashbacks and bad acting Alice talking to rats. Well, I'm sure the conversation is more stimulating than anything else we'll get on this show. The dead mouse says bats eat rats. Well, even if woke Batman, either version was a bat, I doubt it could catch a rat because woke Batman usually can't catch anything except for a serious case of I'm offended. Bad acting Alice is still mad that woke Batman 1.0 crashed her tea party. Meh, well, what can you do? Not much now. Woke Batman 1.0 got fired or sorry, quit. So no revenge for you. Then she summons a bunch of bats to the corpse of Mouse. Well, that's for the kitties, isn't it? Next, we go back to two months earlier. Woke Batman 2.0 is dressed like a cat or a mouse or whatever. I really don't care. And she gets stalked by two white dudes. Great work, show. Not even two minutes in. And we get our first reminder that white dudes are evil. Then one of the white dudes steals her money. This is a 2021 community service announcement, isn't it? Don't trust white dudes in a dark alley. They be evil, yo. Woke Batman 2.0 makes a joke that she has three collection agencies after her. Great money, man. Management. Yep, this is a wonderful example for young people. Spend money you don't have on useless crap, and when the bank comes to collect, just scream oppression. Also, how did Woke Batman 2.0 get any credit? Wasn't she in jail? Then, Woke Batman 1.0 comes in to save the day, probably because this was stunt Woke Batman, and not the real Woke Batman 1.0 because it ain't allowed on the set no more. Then, Woke Batman 2.0 stabs one of the white dudes in the hand. Take that, you evil white patriarchal bastard! Next, we see Woke Batman 2.0 trying to get a job at some security agency agency, but the hiring dude is a jerk, and white of course, and he questions Woke Batman 2.0's criminal background. It seems she was involved in something called Blackgate. Oh dear, is this the show trying to be subtle again? She tells the white dude that she should get this job because she's awesome. He doesn't seem to agree. You suck, Woke Batman! Next, Daddy is still sad because he was mean to the apparently dead, but probably not so they can bring her back if they get really desperate, Woke Batman 1.0. And Grey Scott now seems to have given up on life. You had the chance to get out. You you did it to yourself, dude. Then Daddy yells at Diversity Hire Number 5, and Dear Sophie yells at Bad Acting Alfred for keeping secrets. Well, Daddy and Dear Sophie, only an idiot, couldn't tell that terrible at her job and probably not dead Kate was woke Batman 1.0. Then Daddy gets really mad and makes Diversity Hire Number 5 sad, and Dear Sophie yells at her new Pennyworth Sexy Time friend because she was keeping secrets too. Man, so many secrets on the show. Perhaps one of you could let us in on the secret of how in the name of hell you've never been cancelled. Next, woke Batman 2.0 is at the supermarket, probably looking to steal things when her gunshot wound starts bothering her as she's giving a snarky look to a bottle of ibuprofen. Then some white dudes come in to rob the place. Man, those white dudes, they're a menace, I tells ya. But this time, woke Batman ain't taking no guff and proceeds to beat the crap out of them. You go, girl. But then they manage to escape. Jesus, never mind. Once again, you suck, woke Batman. Then woke Batman gets arrested by a white cop or a crow or whatever who's also a jerk. Gee, what's this plot thread intended to mean? It's a mystery. Next, woke Batman gets interrogated by Dear Sophie and gives another snarky look. Then Woke Batman 2.0 starts to hit on Dear Sophie. It seems they have a past and it seems Woke Batman 2.0's ex-girlfriend was a drug dealer. Ooh, do I sense another mind-numbing and pointless plot thread a coming? And not much point in mentioning the sexual orientation anymore because straight people don't exist in Gotham anymore. Unless they be the white male patriarchal scum. Then Dear Sophie gets snarky. Man, everyone's so snarky on this show. Then she learns that Woke Batman 2.0 didn't really rob the store and now she feels feels kind of silly. Understandable though, given the criminal record and all. Then Woke Batman 2.0 gets even more snarky and says she's not happy with the crows because they put her in jail for 18 months. But she was innocent, yo. Honest. Oh dear. So many new plot threads. Then Woke Batman 2.0 goes on about how oppressed she is. Then says the only reason bad acting Alice gets away with everything and hasn't been killed is because she's white. Good lord, man. No subtlety here at all. No Miss Grumpy Woke Bat Pants. Bad acting Alice gets away with everything because everyone on this show is terrible at their jobs. Next, Woke Batman 2.0 plays a visit to Diversity Hire Number 5 in her illegal clinic. It seems that Woke Batman has discovered that bad acting Alice was Woke Batman 1.0's sister. See there, Miss Grumpy Woke Bat Pants? It wasn't racial, it's nepotism and incompetence. Then she gets pissy with Diversity Hire Number 5, but oh dear, Diversity Hire Number 5 gets pissy right back. You go, girl. This new Woke Batman is pretty unpleasant to be around, isn't she? They bond over their hatred of white bad acting Alice, and then the corpse of Mouse gets wheeled in. Next, our Pennyworth sexy time friend is sad. And then, oh dear, it seems bad acting Alice was hiding in the back seat. Maybe this is the start of another sexy time thread. Bad acting Alice is still mad that she wasn't the one that got to kill woke Batman 1.0. Let me reiterate again. You didn't kill her because you're not a very good villain. Bad acting Alice then proposes a sexy time team up. Our Pennyworth sexy time friend says no, and bad acting Alice stabs her in the stomach. Well, no sexy time for you two, I guess. 
For now, anyway. Then our diverse cast members come to the conclusion that Mosa's nasty corpse was the work of bad acting else. Well, of course it was. The writers are too lazy to come up with anything else. Then a bat bursts out of Mosa's chest. Wow, what clever symbolism. They come to the conclusion that bad acting else wants to blow up a we want woke Batman protest. Well then, I guess that's what you get for not social distancing. Woke Batman 2.0 says she'll play woke Batman 1.0 to disperse the crowd, and bad acting Alfred takes the opportunity to remind woke Batman 2.0 that she isn't white. Really, I don't think anybody noticed. I mean, the show's been so subtle about that fact. Woke Batman 2.0 does it anyway. People seem to buy it, and Daddy's confused. But Daddy's always confused, so there's nothing new there. Then Daddy realizes that this isn't Woke Batman 1.0, and he gets grumpy, and sends his goons after the imposter Woke Batman. Woke Batman 2.0 tells the crowd to leave, in a voice that sounds nothing like Woke Batman 1.0, but nobody seems to catch on. Then Bad Acting Alice suddenly turns up, and calls out Woke Batman 2.0 for being an imposter, and Woke Batman 2.0 gets pissy. Woke Batman 2.0 says she's going to take out Bad Acting Alice, and then I laugh hysterically. Bad Acting Alfred says Woke Batman doesn't kill, but Woke Batman 2.0 is having none of that malarkey. Then Bad Acting Alice launches a bunch of bats on everyone. Oh dear! They be poison bats. And Bad Acting Alice escapes. Business as usual there, I guess. Then Daddy thinks he's gonna shoot all the bats, because he's an idiot. And Dear Sophie finally meets what will probably eventually become her new love interest, Woke Batman 2.0. This while diversity hire number 5 tries to help bat victims, and it doesn't look good, and not just because diversity hire number 5's treating them. Then, once again, bad acting Alice pops out of nowhere, and she wants to have a talk with diversity hire number 5, and they have a disagreement about whether or not woke Batman 1.0 is actually dead. Perhaps I can sympathize, as the show seems to have gotten so much worse without woke Batman 1.0. Well, wonders never cease. Then, bad acting Alice gives a look indicating that she might be into sexy time with woke Batman 2.0, while giving diversity hire number 5 the back scene for bad attacks. Man, that's just not trying. Next, Woke Batman 2.0 is driving in the bastardized Camaro, now known as the Woke Batmobile, while trying to lure the poison bats away and then hijacks a bus. Criminal know-how, I guess, lures the bats into the bus and blows it up. Then the bat virus is cured and diversity hire number 5 is grumpy because nobody gave her any credit. Next, Woke Batman starts to get a big head when people start referring to her as the real Woke Batman. Then Dear Sophie goes to have a discussion with Pennyworth's sexy time friend about who the new woke Batman is, but Pennyworth's sexy time friend gives her something even better, the location of bad acting Alice. Really? Why bother? Y'all just gonna let her escape again. Dear Sophie still isn't happy and lets her Pennyworth's sexy time friend know that they ain't boinking anymore. Then diversity hire number five goes to yell at daddy because he was mean to her. Man, so much drama. Then they make up. Well, that didn't take long. Next, Woke Batman 2.0 tells Diversity Hire Number 5 and Bad Acting Alfred that she's the new Woke Batman. But Bad Acting Alfred doesn't like this idea because we need more drama because that's what people watch superhero shows for. Then Woke Batman 2.0 goes on about how oppressed she is and then they acquiesce. Well, that didn't take long. And Woke Batman 2.0 reads Woke Batman 1.0's journal and learns that even Woke Batman 1.0 thought Woke Batman 2.0 was special. Yeah, whatever. Everyone's special, except white dudes. And now I'm just glad that this pile of ass is over for this week. But oh crap, never mind. It's still not done. Dear Sophie still has to have a discussion with bad acting Alice and puts handcuffs on her. But Sword Lady is having none of it and knocks first Dear Sophie and then bad acting Alice on the head. Oh dear, what a pickle. And that's it for today. As always everyone, thanks for watching and have a great day.